Hey skincare nerds, it's Kathy. Welcome back. I've been getting a ton of requests from you guys asking for help finding a good sunscreen. That makes me feel super happy and proud because sunscreens are such an important part of your skincare routine. I even made an ultimate guide talking about everything you need to know about it last year, but it's time for an update. This time I thought it'd be helpful to keep it skin type specific, so this week I'm helping you find the best sunscreens for oily and breakout prone skin. And if you don't have oily and breakout prone skin, I'll be making at least two more sunscreen videos. One for balanced and combo skin and another for dry skin so be sure to look out for those. I had a ton of other ideas too like best tinted sunscreens, how to reapply sunscreen over makeup, and best budget sunscreens so let me know in the comments below if you want to see any of those videos. If you have oily skin or oily and breakout prone skin, you might have had some bad experiences with sunscreen making you look greasy, look like a ghost, or even breaking you out. But there are so many reasons to wear sunscreen. Do you want to even out your skin tone and fade post pimple discoloration? Wear sunscreen. Sun damage can cause discoloration and hyperpigmentation. Do you want to prevent signs of premature aging like wrinkles and collagen loss? Wear sunscreen. If that's not enough and you need another reason, it's good for your overall health. Did you know skin cancer is the number one cancer in America? Sunscreen helps prevent that. Even if you have darker skin, though melanin does provide some built-in sun protection, sunscreens can still help prevent skin cancer. Think of it this way, if you take vitamins every day for your overall health, then you should also wear sunscreen every day. But maybe you just haven't found the right one yet. And that can be really hard if you're oily and breakout prone. You're worried about whether it's gonna break you out or not. Why does your sunscreen even cause breakouts in the first place? Well, it could have comedogenic ingredients that block your pores, or you could have a sensitivity to the ingredients, which causes a reaction. So you should stick to oil-free sunscreens and use the non-comedogenic label as a guide. And don't worry, I got you, because all of the sunscreens we're talking about today are oil-free, alcohol-free, and fragrance-free. Let's start with a good pick if you don't like sunscreens, the Beauty of Joseon Relief Sun Rice and Probiotics. This doesn't smell or feel like a sunscreen at all. It feels more like a lightweight moisturizer. It's got an SPF of 50 with a PA++++ rating. That's good because you want an SPF of at least 30 and broad spectrum protection from both the sun's UVA and UVB rays. This protects you with four newer generation filters, Uvenol A+, Uvenol T150, Pinosorb M, and Uvasorb HEV. If I lost you at Uvenol a plus, don't worry, that's totally okay. Just know that these newer generation filters seem to solve a lot of the things we don't like about sunscreen. They have a better texture and less white cast than mineral filters, which is why the sunscreen can feel so cosmetically elegant compared to a thick, pasty sunblock. Some of them appear to provide better UVA protection than avobenzone, one of the most commonly used older generation chemical filters. So. Why are they not used in all sunscreens then? Well, if you live in America, it's because they're not approved by the FDA. The FDA evaluates sunscreen filters as a drug, not a cosmetic, and it's more heavily scrutinized. They haven't approved any new sunscreen filters since the 1990s, whereas consumers in the EU, Asia, and Australia have been able to buy sunscreens with these newer generation filters in them for a while now. I wanted to talk quickly about the fact that this is a Korean sunscreen, since I know some of you still feel a type of way since the Korean sunscreen scandal, but most Korean sunscreen brands now make their SPF and PA test results public, and this one was tested by labs in both Korea and Spain. Anyways, I'm probably boring you guys, so let's get back on track. There are other great ingredients in this formula. Rice water, which went viral as a hair treatment, glycerin, a hydrating humectant, and niacinamide, an all-around great ingredient that can help minimize the look of your pores, which is helpful if you have oily skin. Okay, let's see how it applies. The texture squeezes out like a lightweight cream. It spreads super easily. It's almost surprising how easily it spreads. I thought it was gonna be thick and heavy because of the creamy texture, but it just feels like a burst of water hitting your skin. And the thing about my skin is that it can be sensitive and chemical sunscreens tend to sting when I use them. I haven't experienced any stinging with this. I really like how it absorbs super quickly, but it does take a minute or so to dry down fully. So if you wear makeup, I'd wait at least a couple minutes before applying anything else on top. I really like this finish. It leaves this like really nice velvety finish that isn't greasy at all. And it also doesn't leave a white cast. So the smell, it is fragrance free, but it has like a very faint smell of like 
sweet rice. This also wears really well throughout the day. It doesn't feel like you're wearing anything at all and it reapplies really well without pilling. I know pilling can be an issue if you have facial hair. This doesn't settle into my eyebrows. The only complaint I've seen about this is that it's not water resistant, so it's not sweat proof but it doesn't sting my eyes and I think it's a really nice everyday sunscreen. Overall, this is a crowd pleaser that ticks all the boxes. It's affordable, has good sun protection with newer gen filters. It's super easy to spread, doesn't feel heavy or greasy and doesn't leave a white cast. I also like that it's packaged in a tube so you can easily throw it into your bag and take it with you. Plus it's cruelty free. My upgrade pick that's especially great if you have some discoloration or hyperpigmentation is the Elta MD UV Clear SPF 46 sunscreen. It's also a dermatologist's favorite. You won't be able to find this at a Target or Sephora because the brand's distribution strategy is to sell it through your derm, but you can easily get it online. This has an SPF of 46 with broad spectrum protection, so it checks that box. What's really cool about this is that it's a hybrid sunscreen, so it's got a mix of chemical and mineral filters that give you two kinds of sun protection. The mineral filter is 9% zinc oxide, which is great for oily and breakout prone skin because it has some anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, and oil controlling properties. Mineral filters are also helpful for fading hyperpigmentation because they literally block out the sun's rays. Also, the zinc is micronized, which helps reduce the white cast. It's got great ingredients too, like 5% niacinamide and hyaluronic acid. It's also got lactic acid, a gentler chemical exfoliator that helps reveal fresher, more even looking skin over time. I do wish that they were more transparent though and disclose the concentration of lactic acid in here, but I'm going to guess it's somewhere between 0.25 to 5% since it's a sandwich between tocopherol acetate, a stable form of vitamin E, and phenoxyethanol, a preservative. It's also fragrant free and the brand claims it's formulated with sensitive skin and rosacea in mind. But if you do have rosacea, the American Academy of Dermatology recommends to avoid anything with lactic acid in it. So I'm going to be on the cautious side and tell you to skip out on this one. I do want to talk about the packaging. I'm actually not a huge fan of it because of this clear top. It looks really gross once you use it a lot, like this one that I emptied very recently. But I feel like I'm just being petty here. We can definitely look past that. As for the smell, although it's fragrance free, it does have like a faint sunscreeny smell. When I first squeeze out the texture, it kind of reminds me a little bit of toothpaste, but it does spread really easily and it feels actually really silky. So when you first spread it out, it kind of looks really scary, like this white opaque streak. And it does take some time to rub it in and you do have to put in some extra work around your facial hair, like your eyebrows, but the white streaks completely disappear after you put in the work. They do have a tinted option, but it's only one shade. So it's really only for light to medium skin tones. It also takes a little bit of time for this to fully dry down and absorb, but I really like the finish of this. It leaves your skin feeling smoother with a very slight sheen that dries into a semi-matte finish. It works well under makeup, but I like to wait for it to dry fully first. This also doesn't sting my skin and it wears super well throughout the day. It's not heavy at all and it doesn't leave any residue, so it's great for every day. I do know some of you guys are experiencing some pilling with this and that's most likely because it doesn't mix well with your moisturizer or your foundation. So I'd suggest changing how you apply this. Try patting it into your skin instead of rubbing. Overall, this is a great everyday sunscreen that also packs a punch. It's got 5% niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, lactic acid, and it's also a hybrid sunscreen. It is pricier, but it's one of my absolute favorites for oily and acne prone skin. And if you're going to spend more money on one skincare step, I think it should be sunscreen. Sunscreens cost a lot to develop and get to market, especially in the US and Canada because of the regulatory hurdles. But I think the benefits are more than worth it. But don't worry if that price is out of your budget or the Elta MD just didn't work for you because there is a cheap cheaper hybrid option that you can buy from the drugstore. The CeraVe AM Facial Moisturizing Lotion with Sunscreen. Like the Elta MD, this has a mix of chemical and mineral filters, niacinamide, and hyaluronic acid. The mineral filter is also a micronized zinc oxide that spreads easily without feeling chalky, but I find that if you don't apply it properly, then it doesn't look as transparent as Elta MD's. 
Another thing I wanted to point out is this is SPF 30 instead of 46. SPF 30 is adequate, but a higher SPF means you're less likely to burn, so you have to be really diligent about reapplying this. It also doesn't have lactic acid in it, which actually might be a benefit if you're worried about over exfoliating or sensitivity. It can also do double duty as a moisturizer and sunscreen, so you're less likely to have issues with pilling. It's great for all skin types, including oily and breakout prone skin, and has ceramides for some added skin barrier protection. So the texture of it is like a moisturizing lotion, kind of looks like toothpaste there, but it spreads super easily and it feels moisturizing, but not greasy at all. It's super lightweight, so it doesn't feel thick and pasty or chalky. And it starts off looking pretty crazy, like really white, but that does disappear. You do have to rub this in pretty fast for it to disappear because it dries down really fast. So let me just quickly work that in. If you don't work it in before it dries, it will leave a bit of a white cast, so it is much less forgiving to apply. But one good thing is it doesn't settle into your facial hair, so you don't have to worry about that. This wears well throughout the day, and it doesn't sting my eyes. The finish leaves like a really nice, slightly moisturized glow, which I really like. But if you get really shiny, you might want something more mattifying. I also want to point out it has dimethicone in it, which can sometimes cause pilling when it's layered with another silicone-heavy product. I've never had an issue with it. If it's happening to you, try applying any makeup layers on top with a makeup sponge. Overall, this is a great dress drugstore option for your everyday face sunscreen that doubles as a moisturizer too. If you're looking for a matte finish or your skin is very oily, you could try Paula's Choice's Ultra Light Daily Hydrating Fluid. I talked about their Youth Extending Sunscreen in last year's guide. This is very similar. The ingredient list is nearly identical. This also leaves a transparent finish, but the difference is this is a bit more mattifying. This also does have a lower SPF rating at 30, so you have to be extra diligent about reapplying. Aside from the sunscreen filters, there are some other great ingredients in here like glycerin, a nice hydrating humectant, some vitamin E and some plant extracts that provide a bit of an antioxidant boost. So this looks like a milky liquid and the texture is very thin and runny. It's super easy to spread and it dries down super fast so you have to work quickly with it. This does become completely transparent. There's no white cast at all, but if you do have issues with white cast, I recommend warming it up in your hands first before reapplying it and spreading it really quickly before it dries down. See that? Fully transparent. This does leave a matte finish, which is good if you don't like sunscreens that make you look oily. Throughout the day, it felt like I wasn't wearing anything at all. It worked so well under makeup for me and it didn't sting my eyes. I found though that it does feel a little bit around my eyebrows, so it might not be the best if you do have a beard. To avoid any issues with that, I just make sure to spread it out super quickly around my brows so it dries down without leaving any white residue. Because this is a chemical sunscreen, I was kind of afraid that this would sting. Paul's Choice's Youth Extending Sunscreen sometimes stings a bit, but I haven't experienced that as much with this. The only times I felt any stinging was around my eyebrow area after I just plucked. Overall, I think that this is a great option if you have really oily skin and you want a fully transparent sunscreen that's mattifying without being overly drying. My tinted sunscreen pick is the Tower 28 Sunny Days Broad Spectrum SPF 30 Tinted Sunscreen. This is so good. It works for all skin tones because there's more than one shade. I can't believe it's such a low bar. This definitely exceeds that bar with 14 shades across the skin tone spectrum. So the shade that I'm currently using is called 30 PCH, which is medium with a golden undertone. Compared to the range names of other brands though, I'd say their medium is on the lighter side. I'm usually a light medium. By the way, if you've never heard of Tower 28 before, it's a really cool brand that's cruelty free and founded by an AAPI woman. The sunscreen filter in here is non-nano zinc oxide at 12.6%, so it's reef safe and you can take it to the beach. This is packaged with 60% post-consumer recycled plastic. We love that. I wish every brand would do that. Plus it's alcohol free, fragrance free, safe for sensitive skin, and it's formulated with breakout prone skin in mind. So that all sounds good, but the big question is, does tinted sunscreen provide enough protection? This has an SPF of 30 with broad spectrum protection, which is adequate if you apply enough of it. 
If you like light coverage, this shouldn't be the only sunscreen you use. So the way that I like to use it is more like a foundation that I can layer over another sunscreen, like the CeraVe AM, to be super protected. So this applies really well. It's super lightweight. It's not thick, but it's not runny either. It's kind of like the perfect texture. It spreads super easily, and I like to apply it directly with my fingertips to warm it up so it applies better. I like that it doesn't feel greasy, it doesn't break me out, and the finish is just a very nice, slight sheen. This doesn't sting at all, which isn't surprising considering it is a mineral sunscreen. And I like that you can build up the coverage from super light to a medium coverage. Once it dries down, it stays put. It doesn't rub off all over your clothes, which is definitely a plus because I hate that. Overall, it's a great tinted option. Just make sure you're applying enough sunscreen to stay protected. Last but not least, if you're playing sports or you get really sweaty in the summer like I do when I visit New York City in August and it's really humid outside, you'll need something sweat resistant like Neutrogena Sport Face Oil-Free Sunscreen SPF 70. It's sweat resistant, water resistant, and has an SPF of 70 plus. Did I say that it has an SPF of 70 plus? You don't need an SPF that high, but it does mean that you are less likely to burn. Just don't forget to reapply because people think when it's SPF 70, it means that they're good all day, and that's just not true. To get a bit nerdy, Neutrogena's Helioplex technology supposedly helps with photostabilization. Older generation chemical sunscreens aren't photostable, so they can break down when the sun hits it. Helioplex helps to resist that. This is good for all outdoor activities. You can bring it to the beach because it doesn't contain oxybenzone, octinoxate, or nanonized zinc, which have been associated to coral bleaching in some studies. So this really feels like a lotion. It looks super white and opaque to begin with, but it does spread really well and it rubs in pretty easily. It does take some time to absorb, but stick with it. Before it starts to absorb, it looks really white. Then it becomes clear, but really greasy looking. And finally, it dries down totally transparent and mattifies down too. I like to apply a super thick layer about half an hour before I go out for a run. I look absolutely crazy, but it does dry down to be completely transparent by the time I actually step out. And again, bring this with you if you'll be out for a long time, like on a hike, because you really should be applying it every two hours. But if you're swimming, you should try and reapply it every 30 minutes if you can. So this formula is oil-free, but the finish is a bit shiny at first before it dries down, so it probably will be a little too heavy for every day. It's super affordable though, which is great if you're a swimmer and you're reapplying this every half hour. It's pretty comfortable to wear considering it's an SPF 70 plus. It didn't break me out and it didn't sting my eyes. It's really sweat resistant. You'll know if you've waited long enough for it to fully absorb because when you do sweat, if it hasn't absorbed properly it'll turn milky but if it's properly absorbed it'll stay clear overall this is great for intense exercise outside or if you'll be sweating a lot like swimming hiking running I wouldn't wear it as a regular sunscreen for every day if you're just hopping between your air-conditioned car and the mall because it'll probably be a little too heavy for that it's also super affordable and it's really easy to find at the drugstore all right the last thing I want to leave you guys with some tips and advice to make sure you're getting the most out of your sun protection first sunscreen isn't going going to be effective if you're not applying it properly. This is really important. The American Academy of Dermatology says you should apply it at least 15 minutes before you head out for your skin to have enough time to fully absorb it. Also, make sure you're applying enough. The AAD recommends the equivalent of one shot glass or two tablespoons for your whole body. For your face and neck, a really easy hack to remember this is it's about two finger lengths full. But for me, since most people don't apply enough, I'd rather be more cautious, so I usually do three finger lengths just in case. Don't forget to reapply every two hours or after swimming or sweating. Second, even the best sunscreen isn't going to be perfect at filtering or blocking all UV rays. So if you can, go out early in the morning or after 4 p.m. in the summer. And you can cover up in other ways like wearing a really cute bucket hat or covering up with a cute reflective jacket. Third, for an oily skin specific tip, 
tip, if you do get really shiny after applying sunscreen, no matter what you do, you can always apply a loose powder over it to mattify it, but wait until the sunscreen is dry first. Lastly, try not to worry so much about finding the perfect sunscreen. Just get one that you think you'll actually use. The you in five years is gonna be so happy with the you now who's being so diligent with applying sunscreen and investing in your skin health. All right, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give your girl a like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on any more fun and informative skincare videos like this one. See you next time.